TL's Roadhouse. Uh, I'm excited about to get this thing rolling. And I have my friend Lainey Wilson here with me. Ooh. So I have no idea what we're going to do. We're in Mineral Wells, West Virginia. <laughs> so if you guys hear background noise out there, there actually is a band on stage. You're so right. you're going to hear a little low end thump. It's good to see you. Dude, it's so good to see you. I'm so excited to do this. Last time I saw you, you were wearing bell bottoms. <laughs> We've got to talk about something. Okay. I've got a song idea for you, but I don't want to uh -oh. say it right here. Okay, yeah. yeah. So, so we met each other. Uh, it was, it would have been the first part of two thousand and twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah, it was because it was the year before. It was the 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 January before COVID kicked off. That's right. We started our tour with Justin Moore. That's right. And we were out doing shows, and then COVID hit and shut Dude. everything down. Right there in the middle of it. And since then. What all has happened to you Dude. in your life? <laughs> <laughs> Who? Um, you know, whenever whenever COVID hit, I mean, you know, we were we were rocking and rolling with y'all, having the time of our life. And at that point, I mean, not getting to play any shows at all. I was like, what in the world can I do to cover ground by not going anywhere? And so I had to get creative. Yeah. And the scary thing for a young artist that's just getting ready to break, and you've had some hit, some success with airplay and things since yep. then, but when you're right there getting ready to mm. break and all of a sudden everything stops, like, can you get any of that momentum back? Oh it's a gosh. terrifying spot to be in. It was, because I did radio tour in, in the fall of 2019. Yeah. So whenever I hit the road with y'all... It was, I mean, we were, we were, we had lots of plans, you know, Yep. that and, came to a screeching halt. And then, you know, they say it's hard enough to go get momentum once, but uh, to actually have to do it again when the momentum goes away and you've got to rebuild from scratch because everybody was digging and scratching, trying to figure the same Dude, thing out. Dude, well, and that's, I was bound and determined. I was like, uh-uh, nope, not happening. Like I've, I've been in town way too long. At that point it had been uh, nine years I had been in town, um, but I was just like, what can I do? So I really dove into the whole social media thing. Yeah. I mean, I was doing four dang TikToks a day. <laughs> I was like trying to keep up with the cool kids, doing all them dances. I was like, uh-uh, we're going to gain some fans somehow. <laughs> if I can't hug their neck and shake their hand and, and sing music to them, like what else can I do to like, to just, you know, to keep going and try to pick up where we left off whenever yeah. it opens back up. So you did a lot of TikTok, a lot of social media stuff, and I'm sure you wrote a lot of songs. I wrote 300 plus songs. Did you really? I did. Wow. I was, I mean, I'm ready for the next 10 records. I was <laughs> oh like, you know what? Like, we'll never get that time again. No. Um, I will say for me, I don't know. Did you try to write on Zoom any? I did one with Craig Wiseman, uh, and it was really uncomfortable for yeah. me. Uh, yeah. I don't, I like it, it. There's a lot of awkward silence going mm -hmm. on. And when you're in the room with somebody and you're working on a song and everybody's yeah. kind of getting into their headspace, you you understand what's going on, but yep. when when you're looking at each other <laughs> through a screen and and somebody moves away and they don't come back for ten minutes, it's really I, uh, I did I wasn't very comfortable with it. You know? I know, but I, I wrote a lot, and you know there were a lot of people that didn't want to get together in, in a space, know. you know. But I had a handful of guys that weren't too concerned about it, you know. Yeah. That we did our thing. We you know you come in, we had a big big enough room to write that we didn't worry yep. too much about it. Uh, but uh, we tried. I mean, I I probably wrote about a hundred songs on zoom but i just i kept thinking okay like surely i'll get used to this surely i'll get used to it and there's it's just different i mean we got some decent stuff but i'll tell you i just cut a record and none of the songs that we wrote on zoom made the record it's there's something something missing there did you how was your creativity through all of it uh did you feel oh like gosh. was it was it still high did you did your well run dry at any point did you have to back up and take a little time off at that point i definitely like I mean, I get most of my song ideas from listening to people talk, yeah. from sitting at a bar and having a beer and just just being around people and living life. Absolutely. So for me, I'm sure for you too, I was just having to pull shit from the sky. I mean, I was just like, you know, having, I was watching TV, I was digging into Yellowstone, I was, uh, you <laughs> name it, I was just like trying to draw inspiration from anywhere, because at that point, I mean, like, it's it's really hard to come up with song ideas when you're not really living life. It really is, and, and you don't, I, I never really thought about that much before, but I, you know, I, I was kind of going through the same process, and I kind of just hit a wall at one point, where everything just, it's like, the last few things that I wrote were awful. I know, <laughs> oh, like, tell me about it, I was so like, bad. I feel like I ain't never wrote a song in my dang life. And I just, I just ran out of the drive to do it so what are the things how else did you adjust i mean you go from from being on the road and traveling doing radio and running on the bus and doing all these things and touring and and then all of a sudden everything comes to a screeching halt how did you how did you keep your sanity uh i didn't <laughs> i'm gonna be real honest with you i can be honest with you about anything um 
I definitely had moments where I was like, I was losing it. I really? was losing it. Like, I mean, I have never, I have never lived life without playing shows. I mean, yeah. you know, I've, I started writing songs at nine years old and picking up the guitar at 11. So I've always been able to, throughout high school and everything. I mean, I impersonated Hannah Montana. I've always mm -hmm. been like on the road doing stuff. Yeah. And for that to, to take place, I was, it threw me for a loop. But looking back on it now, I'll tell you, I learned a lot about myself. I learned, you know, um, that I'm actually that, not that bad of a cook. I mean, used to, I could uh, mess up a dang hot pocket. Like one end would be frozen, the other end would be burnt. That's pretty bad. <laughs> no, I, I really did. Like I learned um, that it is okay to sit still every now and then. Yeah. Because I'm not good at that, to be honest with you. I mean, like for me to like sit down and really just like just sit there with myself that's a that's a hard thing that's to do. It's hard. It is. But I did it, and I'm glad I did it. But I was real excited when the wheel started turning again. Yeah. Because I was I was not made for that. No, I don't think any of us were. Uh, it was it was a big adjustment, and I, as hard as it was, you know, we uh, we were out. We did uh, I think we did Indianapolis, and then Denver, and then Kansas City. And I remember talking with Justin because uh, I had ordered like a big old case of of uh, hand sanitizer and mm -hmm. some Clorox wipes and all that. And I was telling Justin, we really need to think about adjusting our meet and greets. We got to dial some mm -hmm. things back. This is real. This is going on. He said, ah, yep. I'm telling you, we got home and everything went. Yeah, it. it stopped. It absolutely. Our last stopped. show was like what was it in Kansas City? It was in Kansas City. It was the first week of March. That's right. And and that was the last show we did. And I kept thinking, well, at least by May we'll be back on the. Oh, road. I know. And so May came by mm. and nothing June and I had sure. nine shows on the books in July and uh, when we lost all those I, I played a private 4th of July party and that everything else got canceled yep. that's when it really set in for me uh -huh. and I knew that we weren't going to be going back to work for a while yep. and uh, I had to make some serious lifestyle adjustments it's like okay uh -huh. how do I how do I occupy my time how do I just what keep did myself? you do uh, you know, I bush hogged a lot. I was I about cut to a say, lot of I know you were outside on a tractor doing and something. You can't tell it now, but I was going to the gym five or six days a week. Oh, dude. See, I didn't do that. <laughs> I did. I mean, I was I was hitting it hard. Oh, my I mean, gosh. I mean, I was working out. I got trim, and I mean, I was looking good. And you can't tell now. I've been eating oh, pasta whatever. like there's no freaking tomorrow. <laughs> but, but uh, you know, it's and then and then we by the end of the year, you know, you kind of settled in, and you kind of found a new normal in life. And it was as hard getting rolling again for me as it was yep. the stopping. I know. Because I'd never done that before. And getting back up to speed, it, it took a little bit. Yeah. And, and I said, I'm not going to work as much. I'm not going to. That went out the window pretty fast. Oh, dude. dude. I know. So how much are y'all working now? <laughs> you killing it? Last year? What year is it? 22? <laughs> um, <laughs> you have to 21, yeah. whenever things really started kicking back off again, I think I slept in my bed in Nashville a total of 20 nights. Yeah. And I know you know that what that's like, but I, w I wouldn't have it any other way. This year, it's going to be even less than that because we're, I mean, whew, I don't even know how many shows we got on the books this year. But also that, and then we're filming Yellowstone and, yeah. and doing a little bit of everything. So I'm not going to be in Nashville. But that's good. That that's is. What, that's what you've dreamed of doing. That's Big it. number one record. Congratulations Ooh, on that. We did it. We did, we did it, it with uh, Things a Man Ought to Know and... Then we got another one with Mr. Cole Swindell, and now I got to try to do it again. Yeah. I mean, it's just like, you know, I keep thinking, surely they'll give me another shot. We did it. We did it twice. Yeah. Um, but we'll see. It's like, I mean, it's exciting, and I'm nervous about it, too. Momentum. You know. and, but you've got to work the momentum. That's it. You really do when you get that ball rolling. you got to keep kicking that thing. I know. Kicking it, I mean, as hard as you can. And that, you know, it's been a long time since I work radio. I'm sure it's still just as grueling as it ever was mixing in with a tour schedule, too. How much radio station visits do you do? Dude. Constant. Yep. Every. All the time. And radio tour, for me, I'll be honest, was one of the hardest times of my life. Yeah. Because you just go in those rooms and you just, you know, they just sitting back judging you with your arms crossed. And <laughs> All oh, I got I got to tell you one story. I actually have not told this story like I've told it to a few friends. But uh, we went to this one radio station and we walk in. You know, I got my guitar on my back. We about to go in there and we about to play him some music. And, of course, you know, he made us wait in the foyer for about 45 minutes to show us who's boss. Oh, yeah. You know, and then we go up to his room and... uh. And he said, you should have just left your guitar in the car. He said, I don't I don't want you to play for me. And I'm like, 
I'm going to fight this man at some point. <laughs> We're going to fight. We're going to wad up. Um, he said, I want to hear what it sounds like through my computer speakers. And I said, okay, fair enough. That's what's going to be played on the radio. That's fine. So he cranks it up. This is my first single. It was called Dirty Looks. And he plays it through his, like, 1995 computer speaker. So it literally sounds like this. Mm -hmm. Like, you can't understand a dang word. He listens to it twice. And then he leans up out of his, you know, big old relaxing looking chair and he sits up and he and he like leans across the desk to me and he said laney you're just not good <laughs> oh my i knew gosh. you would be shocked and um and he said i hope you don't i hope you don't you know get real upset when you leave here and, and start crying and stuff that's what he told me and then i leaned across his desk and i said so and so i said <laughs> out of the 10 years I've been in Nashville, you telling me that ain't shit. Period. Yeah. So, like, if anything, it just makes me want it that much worse. There are some uh, people that enjoy that little bit of power that they have. And I experience, and, and I would imagine that it's 10 times worse being a woman in this business because you're dealing with that male ego and you're dealing with those guys that do control your your faith. They, they you know, and it's it's got to be frustrating. But, but then he added the song. Oh, it's all a game. It is a game. It's all a game. They and then he said, you could have at least it. taken me to lunch. <laughs> <laughs> you can kiss my big old butt, too. Yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> I can tell you all kind of radio tours. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. How was yours? You know, it was different for me back then in the early days because in the, in the 90s, uh, before Elliot Spitzer went on his witch hunt in the music business, I don't know if you remember nah. all this, back when we did it, we did showcases. I had four showcases. Oh, shoot. I had one in Dallas. I had one in Atlanta. I had one in New York. I had one in Marina Del Rey. Wow. So each one of my regionals would bring their primary, their big market stations, and then fly the PD and the music director in, and we would put them up at a hotel. The label That's would great. do two or three acts. We'd rent the ballroom out. Everybody was there. They'd wine and dine them. They'd have them a free bar. Everybody, you didn't have to do all that stuff. And so we were able to do that. And then Elliot Spitzer, who was the the DA, the the what was he the prosecuting attorney, whatever he was for the state of New York, went on a witch hunt and said that that was all payola, and they stopped all that. That's when no. we started having to go to individual stations, and Ooh. they stopped all that because they were able to wine and dine them and, and come in and bring them in, get them excited and play the wow. game. But but that took a lot of money to do it that way. But it was so much easier on everybody. Now we still had to do some station visits when you were working yeah, a record, yeah. when you were getting in the top ten, you had some markets that you needed to smooth. Yeah, it, it never. I always looked at it like. Um, uh, you're running for a political office. You just never get to have an election because as soon as wow. you're done, you got to do it all over again. It ne the the campaigning never, never stops. It never stops. It never ends until you're done with that portion of your career. Wow. Yeah. That's the best way to explain it. I've it never really thought is. about it like that. And the and you know it's it's on the back side of it. You're always worried that once once you get to that place where you're not working radio anymore and you've kind of moved to that next phase of your life, you wonder how you're going to adjust. But the fans don't go away. It's it, no, they it, don't. The you still ones, you're, yeah. there's still there's still growth that happens on the back side of it. But there's nothing. This is one of my favorite things to talk about with the new artists as I talk to people. One of my tell me what it felt like your experience mm -hmm. as an artist feeling that record go up the charts. All the way to number one because it has little waves. Mm -hmm. tell, tell me how. Tell me every step of it. Tell me how you felt it. Well, so backing up, um, when we went in to even cut the record, we things a man I don't know was not even on the list. Really to cut. And I remember exactly where I was. I was headed home. I was on Dickerson Pike, and it was a Holy Spirit. It just was like it just hit me in the stomach. Oh. I wasn't even thinking about like. I wasn't even thinking about the record. It was just all of a sudden in my stomach. It was like, <gasps> you got to cut this song. So we had we had already like had our 12 tracks listed out. And I called the label and I said, I don't know why, but uh, I know we hadn't really even looked at the song, but we got to cut it for some reason. And um, we got to find out, we got to figure out what else to take off to put this one on there. Thank God we did, because that was the one that just automatically raised its hand. I mean, like across the board, I'm talking about, old men little girls it didn't matter across the board that was a song that was connecting and that was my second single because dirty looks the first one like i was telling you about with old man mm -hmm. judging me <laughs> in radio um it I, I don't even think it cracked top 65 yeah and then the shutdown happened and then we just pulled it we were just like this is it's just too much right now we just we need to regroup and figure something else out because i couldn't go meet them anymore you know and so 
we went to radio with things a man ought to know and it definitely it just felt different than dirty looks did and it started moving a little bit but then i heart chose me to be their on the verge artist and that's when it really all changed when they all had to you know had to add it at that yeah. point and um it jumped i think it jumped like 20 spots when they first added, and i was just like hold up a minute like this is okay um and it just seemed like every single show just a hundred more people knew it a hundred it was it was so weird watching it go up the charts i mean we were on the road with aldine at that time and it was like the first weekend i remember probably about a third of the crowd was singing it and then it was like with every step up the chart it was just like bigger and bigger and by the time it got to number one everybody all twenty five thousand of them people were singing it and i'm like like I don't know if I'll ever get used to that. I really don't, and I hope I don't, because that's the. Ugh. But you got to look at it like this: that it's. I always looked at it. It's like it's like riding a wave, mm-hmm. and and uh, being on a surfboard and catching that wave, and it's just getting bigger and bigger and mm-hmm. bigger. And when it peaks out at number one, there's a burn off period, and then it kind of settles, and then when yeah. you come behind it with another one, and you get to feel that wave again. Yeah. It's it's a really hard thing to truly explain to somebody that's never experienced it because mm-hmm. it's a very tangible, real feeling. It is. I mean, you you don't you know you could it's it makes the hair stand. I up got on hair your stand arm. up on my arms now. And you'll you'll remember it the rest of your life. It's oh something gosh. that will never go away, and you never do get used to it, but but you get addicted to it. Oh, I know. It's like <laughs> I'm chasing that feeling right now. Absolutely, you, know? you get addicted. I'm, I'm to chasing it. it, and we got another one out on radio right now called Heart Like a Truck. And it's definitely moving a lot quicker than anything of mine ever has. Um, but, yeah, I'm getting waves of that. Yeah. Of, like, now all of a sudden I see people singing it, and I'm like, ooh, I'm getting that feeling. I'm getting that. It's addicting. It really is. It is addicting. And you can, and, and you'll get to where, you know, when you go back in and you cut that next record, you kind of get a better instinct about what works for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sometimes uh, you'll there'll be friction between you and the label about fighting th- for things that you oh, know. Because yeah. you'll test things out here. I'm sure you, you yeah, test yeah. some new songs with people out on the road and mm-hmm. play new songs periodically. The label don't get to experience that. They don't, they no, don't no, get no. to feel that feeling when, when you know something works. When you know it works. When you know it works and you've tested it out. A song that that nobody knows and you get that feeling it's like this this yeah. could be really good and sometimes you've got to stick to your guns and fight the fight you yeah i'm definitely figuring that out too like i got a so many people around me who support me and love me first of all like i feel like they love me first and then they love what i do which is just a prayer answered yep. but it does seem like the better you do, the more opinions <laughs> involved. I was like, you didn't have an opinion last year. Why well, all of a sudden you got an opinion now? And it, there's there's a lot more. Well, uh, success, everybody wants to be a part of success. That's right. Uh, but you're the one that has to guide the ship. That's right. If it's not real to me, I can't do it. So let's, let's transition. We've talked a lot about the music business. I, I want to hear about your upbringing. I want to hear about yeah. your childhood. How many siblings do you have? I got one sister. Really? One You're sister. Close? 19 months apart. Yeah. She's my big sister. She's got two babies, a dog and a husband. She lives in northeast Louisiana. Yeah. yeah. And, um, yeah, she just, we're, it's so crazy because we're a lot alike, but we're also real different from each other. Yeah. We're both living our dreams, though, and she's happy and i just um it, it's so funny like she has no clue about the music business at all like for instance the first time i ever got a cut i called her and i told her i said oh my gosh jana i got a cut and she said oh my god are you okay <laughs> <laughs> she said you got a band-aid i'm like okay and this is yeah. i didn't cut my foot yeah <laughs> so uh how big a high school how big of a school did you go to when you were growing oh my up? gosh man well so i'm from a town of 200 and something people oh my lord have mercy yeah. i thought um, i came from a small place yeah yeah 200 something people but we had to go over to the town next to us to actually go to school so my hometown is called baskin it's okay. in franklin parish but we had to go over like to carol Wednesday. baskin yeah like carol baskin <laughs> she ain't from there but every time i say baskin they're like carol baskin <laughs> Killed her husband. <laughs> Sorry, no. <I> could <laughs> but uh but yeah, went over to the town next to us to go to school. I graduated high school in twenty ten and I graduated with one of the biggest classes I've ever had and that was twenty four kids. Wow. So yeah. from pre K to twelfth grade it was two hundred students. Wow. Yeah. 
How's your uh, how's your family dealt with all this success? Commercial success affects everybody in your immediate life. Yeah. Everybody that you knew growing up, it affects your mom and dad. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. How have, yeah. They, how have they dealt with all this? I think um, this sounds a little crazy, but like I have I've believed it with my entire heart my whole life that I could do this. Like I just knew. I mean, my parents took me to Gatlinburg and Dollywood when I was nine years old. Yeah. And on the way home to northeast louisiana i begged him i was like can we please drive through nashville and i remember exactly where i was on the interstate in the back seat i was looking at the batman building yeah. and i told my mom and daddy i said this is home and mama turned around the back seat and she was like laney you're nine years old like what do you know you know you're my baby and um but i just knew i knew that i wanted to write country music i mean country music was my life that's we eat sleep and breathe it you yeah. know I was listening to Yo Ass, <laughs> <laughs> and um, it just it was a it was a part of me always, and I knew that at some point in time I was going to do it, and I think they knew it too, deep in their heart, and they did anything they possibly could to help me. I mean, when I moved to Nashville, they helped me buy my camper trailer. Yeah, I lived in a camper the first three years I was there, and they like. Any kind of singing competition, the Country Colgate Showdown, the Honky Tonk Talent Show, whatever it was, Mama would take me and Daddy would pay for us to get there. Wow. Because they knew, they knew how bad I wanted to do this. So I think from the beginning they kind of accepted too of like, she ain't stopping. So this is something that we're going to either have to support her, you know, or. You know, I, I think uh, this, is, this is such a rough business, um, you know, like the the radio guy that you met, it'll chew you up and spit you out. You you've got to have some internal drive, and you've really got to know and 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 go into it knowing that I'm gonna I'm gonna be in this music business one way or another. Whether it's just as a singer songwriter, yes. as a songwriter with other people yep. cutting my songs, as an artist, uh, or if I wind up working at radio or working at a record label. I mean, I, I that was my mindset when I came. Yep. It's like I'm gonna be in this business. Same. I am not stopping. And, I'm, and I went came. With no plans of ever going back to where I came from. Same. There was no you know. plan B. No, there was no plan B for yep. me either. You know. I was just like, I, kind of bound and determined. Like, I'm going to find my place. I might not be a big old superstar, um, but I'm going to, no matter what, even if I'm a dang school teacher, I'm going to write country music. You know, you you said something, too, when you, you know, was, were talking about when you came through Nashville. I never came to Nashville until I moved there when wow. I was like 22 years old. But I remember rolling into town and, and that feeling that I had that I was home. Yes. And I have never felt that way any place else I've I been. And, and you're one of the few people else that I've ever heard I say that. You You knew it. And, I, I mean, it's something that you just know. I, I, I knew that feeling. And, and I didn't know why, but I had dreamed. Mm -hmm. You know, here, here's I, I think for me that I'd, I'd bounced around, played in a couple of bands, and lived in, in North Louisiana in a couple of places, went to college, music scholarship, and did all that other mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, when I came... I finally found all these other people that were just like me. Same. And I felt so comfortable and at ease. Me too. It was it was an amazing time, uh, you know, just getting there and collaborating with young people and feeling that spirit of independence and and dreaming the dream. There was just the you were right. The dreaming of the dream was an amazing time. Oh my gosh! It really was. There's no feeling like it. No. And like for for folks back at home. I think they. I think a few of them definitely like had a hard time wrapping their head around. Like yeah, especially when you come from a small town and everybody's used to getting up and punching a time clock, or, or going to the paper mill, or, or going to the school with their teachers, or whatever, whatever that's you it. know. That's it's 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 that day to day grind, and, and a lot of people love what they do, and they grow up with passion for that's different it. things, and dreaming that kind of dream is so insane that's right to normal people it really is yeah. it's, it's it, how how dare you think you're good enough to go do what they're doing that's right it really is it's hard my daddy he actually i don't know if he'd admit it now but his mama tells me all the time my granny she tells me that it actually was his dream really and he used to roll this picnic table out to the side of the highway and stand on top of it and play his guitar play some glenn campbell for the cars passing by Wow. And um, he always had a guitar in his hand. He always just, you know, he's the one that showed me a, a few chords on the guitar. But it's kind of cool because he's getting, even though he's never, like, admitted it to me, like, this was my dream, too, when I was little, um, he's kind of getting to live vicariously through me. And, That's awesome. Yeah. It is. It's pretty sweet. I mean, they, like I said, they've done anything in their power to, to help me see this through. And um, 
I mean, they keep me humble, though. <laughs> they keep... Well, they have to. I mean, that's a big part of it. And and keeping relationships with people that you grew up with, you know, those those are important things, too. The older you get, the more you'll realize, too, that you're never going to make those long, lifelong friends again. Yep. Time, time I'm realizing that. Yeah. I've, I'm starting to already realize that. I'm like, Write a lot of songs about it. <laughs> yeah. You know, those relationships are important, and those deep-seated ones that, that go back to kindergarten and first grade, you know, those those friendships can never be, you can't redo those. You, met, right. you meet great people along the way and you have friendships with them, but not not those long no, ones. No, you're right. Really, it's, it's a different thing. You are right. The ones that just stand the test of time. Yep. For me and my sisters, she's my best friend. Yeah, that's awesome. She just, like I said, she keeps me humble too. <laughs> She'd be like, you ain't that cool, just so you know. <laughs> So how do you how do you find balance right now? I know you're all you're doing is working, but <clears throat> do you read a lot? I mean, what what's your outlet? Oh my gosh, what is my outlet? Um, I'm trying to figure it out. So we just got on a bus like three weeks ago. Yeah, we've been doing this in a van for ten years now, or we did it. My daddy let us borrow his F450 truck for a couple of years. We did it in a flatbed for a while, strapped all them amplifiers to the back of it. Really? <laughs> and then we switched over to a, a Sprinter van. And then, like I said, three weeks ago, we finally got on a bus. And when I tell you that has changed my life, like I finally am getting some rest. Because I'm going to be honest with you. There was a time a couple months ago where I was so tired, I could not see straight. I understand. I was not like, I was like, I'm not going to be able to do my job the next day. And I'm I'm my worst critic. Like I want I want to be the best version of myself that I can possibly be, and that was not happening. Well, it's awful hard when you're getting up and doing radio at eight o'clock in the morning, and uh, and then running all day in a car, and then trying to grab a nap here and there, and then having mm -hmm. to sing a full show at night, and the heat and everything else. I mean, it yeah. it, it will wear you down. It will. It really does. It will, and and mentally too. You yeah. know. Yeah. But um, I've been really getting into like listening to meditation sometimes i felt like i could not like calm down enough to even like say a prayer and really mean it and be like thank you god yeah. thank you for these incredible like blessings i mean really and truly every day lately has just been like a huge blessing like we find out great news and and i've just been in a whirlwind so listening to those meditations have kind of gotten me to the place where i can calm down and actually pray and mean every word that i'm saying because yeah. like i was just woof it's overwhelming yeah it really is so that and just uh drinking my coffees in the morning uh <laughs> just you know trying to just take a deep breath and coming up with song ideas and it's uh this is a, a big learning curve for me right now we're just i'm i'm figuring it all out are you able to ride on the road at all i have not been lately yeah. um I, I do hope that once we kind of start getting into the groove of everything on the bus and um, I'm hoping I can bring some folks out and we can, you know. Who all are who all is on your schedule? You working with you big tours and stuff? Who you out with right yeah, now? Yeah, we're going. I know you slumming down here with me in West Virginia oh, tonight. You <laughs> I'm most excited about this one. Crazy. Um, we got John Party this uh, summer, and we got Luke Combs in the fall. Yeah. So. That's good. I was Luke Combs' very first co-write in Nashville. Were you really? And I remind him of it all the time. <laughs> That's why he asked me to go on the tour. That boy's got a voice, don't he? <laughs> Does Good he? Lord, have I know. mercy, he can sing. I know. Yep. There's a lot of talent out there right now. I'm blown I'm away. I'm excited about it. We've got uh, we've got some dates with Morgan Wallen and Hardy coming up. Come so on. Uh, Hardy's Hardy's on my list to do my podcast. So I'm looking forward to sitting He's down. We've got a dear we've got friend a, of mine. I love I him. Think, I think the world of him. So it's, He's... It's there's just so much good stuff out there, and I feel like the the music in the industry is finally starting to come back around. I, it it got a little fluffy to me there for oh, a little bit. Tell me about it. It wasn't I ain't it about wasn't, it. I didn't I didn't care much for it. I'm more of a you know a hardcore whiskey crying in your beer and you know love gone wrong. That's that's my bread yep. and butter, and I. You know, I, I, I said, everything just kind of got watered down to me for a while. Well, and I I agree with you. I see light at the end of the tunnel right now, and I hope it stays that way. I mean, I feel like there are so many people coming out of the woodworks that I'm like, dang. Like, okay, th if this is the direction that we're going, then we're going to be all right. There for a minute, I was concerned. I was concerned, too. How many uh, how many current singles are they playing on the charts? Were they 17 or 18 now? Is that, uh, I mean, probably. That's, I mean, if you if you put that in perspective, a lot of people don't realize, mm -hmm. you know, they you don't realize how repetitive everything is. But when we talk about uh, currents on the radio, that means how many new songs are getting, are getting added right yeah. now. How many currents are they playing on the charts? That's moving up. Because once they peak out and they start coming back yeah. down, they go, 
go into a different category once yep. they start moving back down the charts. So if you think about that, 17 or 18 current songs that's that right. are moving up the charts, that's not a lot of space. That's right. And you've got how many record labels in Nashville that are all working to four or five different artists fighting at a time fight, fighting for that little tiny space right there. It's mm -hmm. amazing how congested it all is. Yep. See, back when, back when uh, in the 90s, I was able to get like four singles a year. I mean, it, I 12, 14 weeks up the charts. So we were able to build a body of work a lot faster back then than what you're able to do now. What? Mm -hmm. How long did it take for... Uh, Things man on it? Mm -hmm. This is with On The Verge. Literally, after they all had to add it, mm -hmm. it still took a year and a month. Are you kidding me? It took a year and a month. Now, the, the song I did with Cole, Never Say Never, it... Uh, it didn't take long at all so because we had it? both of our radio teams working it. So what's that, 56 weeks? Dude, I don't know. But a year we, and a month. We probably won like the <laughs> the longest it ever took a song to go number one. <laughs> you know, it, and if you think about that, how difficult it is to build a body of work when it takes that long to get a record up the charts and and you're you're working one album for two to three years, mm -hmm. it's it's awful difficult to be able to to get that that catalog built up like yep. we did back in the day yep. so they were moving things up in uh -huh. and out so much faster back then i know i feel like the only guy who can do it right now is luke holmes i mean he's moving what you think like at least three a year maybe yeah maybe so yeah. i've kind of just like accepted that that's the that's the game right now um thank goodness I feel like people, once they hear that song on the radio, they go and listen to more. And, you know, and I feel like a lot of people are learning other songs of mine that have never, you know. Do you find that social media has a big impact? I know we talked, we touched on oh it a gosh. little bit with, with your TikTok and different things. I mean, that's why we're doing this. I mean, and, and to be able to, to sit down, I, I, I have to share this with you, too. You know, I, I, I've done a radio show, I do a radio show that yep. I've been doing for eight years. Mm -hmm. And, and. I, all I'm because of the situation that it's in. I play '80s, '90s, and early 2000s, mm -hmm. so I'm not allowed to have any current artist. Yeah. Because we want to play some of your music when you come on the show, and radio balks at it because I'm on so many stations out there. We're in 150 something markets wow. that it affects the chart. Uh -huh. So they don't want me, they don't want me in it. So so it limits the people that I even get to sit down and talk with. I'm yeah. I'm kind of stuck with my artists from the '90s and yeah. the guys from the '80s. When you're so playing, I really you're wanted to. With all the Oh, yeah, and, and I know a lot of the younger artists, too, and, and I've found that being able to sit down, for me, I got to sit down and talk with uh, Kenny Rogers before he passed wow. and, and T.G. Shepard and the Oak Ridge Boys and wow. a lot of those guys, and I come out of it with a relationship that I didn't have yep. because I got to know so much about them along the way, which yep. was an amazing thing, and you don't realize how little people actually talk. You see each other at award shows, and you see each other when you work with each other, but you really don't sit down and have a conversation unless unless there's a real true connection and, and you have to work at that. that that's right that is something that i think you really have to put the time and, effort and into. probably realize that you have a whole lot in common with these folks that you never even absolutely well and and i was too self-absorbed when i was young i get it i get it that's easy i'll be honest i was i mean we were riding high i mean we we're rock stars it was, it. it was crazy and you get you get caught up in that, that right. whirlwind and you just uh you, you you get lost in it sometimes i know it's seem, easy. I can definitely see where that's. It's easy to do. You you seem to be handling all that real well. I'm trying. Yeah. Um, you know, I've had I've had one real diva moment. I'll tell you about it. <laughs> I'm like I feel like I'm I'm not. It's not even that bad, but for me, I guess it is. We were in Elizabeth, Colorado. I was side stage. I had my guitar on me, and. <laughs> the guy, the security guard, he goes, "Whoa, whoa, whoa! I need to see your pass." And I looked at him and I said. I am the pass. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, who are you becoming? And then I said, worse. I said, I can go get my lanyard, but it's got my face on it. And then he was like, okay, you can go. I'm like, who, what in I've, the world? I'm I've, not proud of that. I've just, I've just laughed at some of them sometimes. <laughs> it's, it, yeah, it, it's, it's part of it. Have so you had, we got some little lanyards <laughs> made that say, I am the pass. <laughs> Well, you got your guitar on. Come on now. You're right. I know. Like, who else is walking around here with a dang guitar strapped to them? Come on, sir. Oh, that's funny. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I am the past. Oh, so with all the good stuff that's happened to you, what uh, 
Where do you see yourself in the next five years? What, what's your five-year plan? You got a plan? Oh, my gosh. Um, I mean, do you have a goal of, of you know, uh, you know, how many songs you want to write? Do you have a goal yeah. of, of about places that you want to go? Do you have a goal when you want to start headlining? Do mm -hmm. you, what, are your, what are your goals? I have so many goals. And I guess it was probably about two years ago I wrote, like, a, a big list of my goals. And one of them was getting on a bus and having a number one song and – being on a major tour and playing the Grand Ole Opry. And yeah. we have accomplished every single one of those goals plus more. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool, like, writing it out and then actually doing it. It's like, dang, like, I believe in manifesting. I think that is a big deal. I mean, I went, I pulled up to the Grand Ole Opry, and it was like a year before I actually played. And I said out loud to myself, I'm crazy. Y'all going gonna to realize I'm crazy. <laughs> but I remember looking at it. And I said out loud to myself in the parking lot, I said, I'm going to play the Grand Ole Opry in a year. And it was literally like a year and a month later that I actually got to play. And I just, I've been doing that a lot. I believe it. Speak it. And it, it happens. I mean, of course, you got to do everything, you know. Well, yeah, but if you visualize it, I mean, if you really speak it and you commit to it, then nothing can stop you but you. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So you hadn't met these guys back here. That's uh, yes, Derek. We call him Junior. You yeah. probably remember. And that's Scott. Yeah, uh, dude. I know uh, Junior's just wanting to ask something so bad. He's, uh, he's just about Please. to bust at the seams back there. <laughs> I was just thinking about the Opry thing and how, uh, you know, because I, I grew up an hour and a half west of Nashville. So yeah. I, 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 I'd always been out there in the parking lot and just like, man, one of these days, I'm uh -huh. going to do it. And then, you know, working with Tracy, I was able to do it. My mom was there the first night, and it was wow. just it, it was a special moment. I loved it. Mm -hmm. yeah. That was not a question. I know it wasn't a question. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I'm telling you, there was, like. This is the first time I ever spoke on this podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, like, my parents got to go, too. And the trip I was telling you when I, where I was on the interstate, and I told Mom and Daddy that this was home, Yeah. they also took me to the Opry, and we saw Crystal Gale, Phil Vassar, little Jimmy Dickens, Bill Anderson, Jenny Seeley. And um, I remember where I was sitting, and I remember looking up there thinking, I'm going to do it. That's another manifest. I've just been manifesting stuff my whole life. So I'm going to be a millionaire. I manifest. <laughs> <laughs> manifest it for me, please. You have to. You have to. <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, well, we just uh, we just got back from Europe. Do you, you, they have any plans of sending you over to Europe and doing any of that stuff? So it's, I think it's a we, grind now. Dude, I know. We I've been over there, I think, three times because before it was 2018, actually, I had way more fans over there than I did here. Just way more. Um, and I'm interested to see what your thoughts are about, like, the European fans just because I feel like – I'm, I'm talking about they went way back into like some deep stuff that I released years ago. Oh yeah, they'll that I didn't even remember the words to. Oh yeah, and they appreciate just like songwriting and storytelling. And what's your experience? It's been good. The travel's a lot harder, but I love going to Europe. I love the the culture. You know, mm -hmm. you have to. And like I, I, I try to get my mindset to a place when I go over there. It, the old saying, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Yeah. The food's not going to be the same. That's right. The travel conditions are not going to be the same. Yeah. Air conditioning is a luxury. Yeah, I know. <laughs> go, you know, there's a lot of things that are different. But the fan experience, they're really great. They really are. They're very passionate. Uh, the people that do listen to country music over there are really, they, they get into it. And when, when they know you're coming, they'll look you up on the Internet now that we have all those new tools. And they'll listen to everything in your catalog. They'll listen oh, to know. your entire body of work. They'll, be, they'll read everything that they can find find out about you they'll know where you're from they'll know your mama's name they know all about you it's it's so cool <laughs> yeah. and back back when we had fanfare before it became cma music fest yeah. when it was over at the fairgrounds oh, yeah. uh the media room they'd have it in the first fair, in the first b barn that you came into so you'd have all this international media and we got exposed to a lot of that stuff early on wow. i didn't get to work europe as much as i wanted to but i was just over there with the bellamy brothers they're huge in europe uh, yeah oh they're, yep. they're but they had a big pop cross over back in the eight, uh, I guess it was the eighties. Let your love flow. Remember when that that's uh -huh. on? And so they're they're freaking huge. They work more there than they do in the United States. It's wild. It really is. And they're cool old cats too. Yeah. If you ever look at some of their old album covers, oh, you need to check some of their album covers out. <laughs> they were something. Uh -huh. Cool cats. <laughs> they were cool cats. So uh -huh. who do you look up to out there? Who do you like? Oh my gosh. I mean. There, there's so many. Um, Any other female acts um, um, younger than you that you're hearing? I mean, the, as you're kind of... I've got a lot of incredibly talented, like, girlfriends. Yeah. Um, 
just girls who are like real and make me excited about the future of country music. That's awesome. Um, not just, not not those kind of friends. <laughs> um, I definitely have. I mean, this is. I'm I'm just gonna be honest. I've definitely ran across a, a lot of uh, girls out there. You know. I hate to say it, but you know what? I'm going to put it out there. Um, a lot of the girls try to act like, oh, team girls, team girls. Like, let's support each other. Da, 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 da. Um, Don't turn around. <laughs> about half of them mean that. Yeah. And the other half, I'm going to be honest with you. They just, uh, they can't help themselves. And I never want to be that way. I kind of, I feel like let's all hold hands and, and run to the finish line together. I you don't know? think you're ever going to be that way. It's not your personality. Yeah, I just, yeah. I, I can't do it. Um, I've never, I've never wanted to take something away from somebody. Of course, there's been times where I've been like, I would love a record deal too. I would, I would love a publishing deal too, but I never would ever want to take great things away from people. So, um, I've ran into a few of them like that, but hey, swerve, go on around them, see ya. Do your thing. <laughs> so, but yes, my my friend group, um, just incredible. Um, Megan Patrick, Ashlyn Craft, Casey Tindall, um, just a lot of Jenna LaMaster, Farron Rachels, a lot of talented girls who can write the hell out of a song. You had a chance to develop a relationship with Miranda at all yet? And Miranda has become one of my best friends, really. She's a badass. She... Yeah. I feel like I've known her my entire life, and she Something. is who she says she is. Absolutely, she is. She, she don't give a shit. She don't give a shit, <laughs> and she'd fight a grizzly bear for me too. Oh, well, that's good to know. She um, because yeah. she says she's had to fight. She's had to fight. I don't know. She's she's had a lot of stuff come at her over the years. She's had to fight to keep her head above water at times too. I know. And she's done well. And she's, you know, I, I told you something something a while back about uh, the, the the main goal is to get out of this with your soul intact. Yeah. She's she's. I think she's managed to survive the hard part. She she's, has. She's up on top of the wave now. She's she's making her own rules now. I know. I just like when I have any questions at all, um, I just holler at her. Even when if it's like. Hey, what are the like the things that I definitely need on my bus as a girl? Like yeah. you tell me, give me a list, you know, things like that. Just for some reason, she just genuinely um, also supports me and um, just sings my praises. And I think it's important for people like her who have been there, done that. Um, even you having me on this podcast, you're showing the rest of the world like, hey, I believe in love, Laney. You know, like yeah. maybe you should too. And I can't wait to be able to to do that for people too. Absolutely. Uh, you just keep being you, girl. You got this. Well, I just tell you, I don't take it lightly that you asked me to do this or that that you even wore bell bottoms for me. I don't take it lightly. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people may not know that, but Lainey called me up. She said, I need you to do something for me. I said, whatever, oh, whatever. God. So she uh, she put me on some bell bottoms, and, and it was, uh, uh, what was it, uh, Country Radio Seminar? Oh, yeah, CRS. CRS. Uh, I, I, did you ever see the video? I did see the video, but I wish I could have seen the reaction at CRS when it was played on the screen. Look, I nobody, heard nobody it. cared about everybody else being in bell bottoms, but it seems like every radio interview I ever have, they are talking. They were like, "How in the world did you get Tracy Lawrence in a pair of bell bottoms?" I haven't seen this. I, I need to check this out, dude. We'll, we'll show you here in just a minute. Right. But my answer is always: I say, when I was on the road with you and Justin, y'all stood side stage and watch me every single night play my set my 25 minute set they i mean every night and that ain't that ain't normal that ain't something that you ever see and so also i was taking notes i'm like okay one day when i have the opportunity to um to headline a show like i need to make people feel the same way that y'all made me feel and i remember walking off stage every night and you'd share a little bit of your whiskey with me and I was like, and somebody told me, they said, he don't share his whiskey with people. <laughs> and so I thought, well, if he shares his whiskey with me, maybe he'll get in a pair of bell bottles for me. <laughs> you know, I uh, I had some bad experiences with a few uh, uh, older acts when I got started. I got kicked off a couple of tours. Oh, my God. Uh, and and uh, so I, I've always, you know, one of the things that I learned early on, uh, sound guys with real insecure artists, They'll, they'll throttle your PA back so you don't get as much PA as they do. So you can't, your front of house guy can't push it. There's a lot of little tricks that they'll do to you. And I swore that I'd never be that way. I, I never wanted to be that guy. Wow. If you don't have the confidence up enough to go out there and, and do your thing, mm -hmm. then you don't need to be doing this. That's right. You know, because you got to have a little bit of an ego and you better, if you're going to go out there and headline, then you 
get your, right. get your stuff together and go out there and do your job. That's right. And uh, I always tend to push a little bit hard. <laughs> right. You know, I got kicked off. Of I got to hear about this. I know you probably can't tell now, but I would I would love to hear about this. Well, there were there were guys, and I won't mention his name, but I remember that it was one of those. He was a big actor in the in the eighties and everything, and uh, he they would make the people in the hallway when he was coming to the stage turn around, either get out of the hallway or turn around and face the wall because God is coming through the hall. Oh. And everybody was making jokes and laughing at him when you do all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like, come on, man, calm down. Like, don't look me in the don't, eye. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. <laughs> and, I, you know, I, I saw that stuff, and it's like, man, don't be that way. There's no reason for all that. I, so can't, I, I can't handle it. I can't handle it either. I never could stand it. Just make me want to go out there and kick his ass. Either. Oh, I can't imagine. <laughs> yes. I do the same stuff. It's all funny, <laughs> <laughs> it's all fun. You know, it really is. Well, oh thank you. Gosh, you, thank you know, you. anything else you want to talk about? I don't really want to get into politics or religion or no, the world or any of no. that stuff. I mean, hey. there's so much of it going on, and, and we've all got our opinions. And, that's it. and it hurts my heart, a lot of stuff that's going on. But uh, that's for another time and another place. I mean, I think we can agree that we love God. We love our country. Amen. Uh, we love people. We love country music. Um, love my mama. I love she my mama. She got COVID right now. Does she, she? She's doing all right. She's on the tail end of Ugh. it. Ugh. Yep, she finally caught it. She's hard headed. <laughs> Jeez, Louise. <laughs> Let's see, did we cover everything? Um Oh, um, I am gonna be on season five Yellowstone. Awesome. As a actress. Really? So not just music you No. What's your character? Can't Her you name probably... is Abby. Abby. And she's a musician. Okay. You and staying in the bunkhouse? Hey, I might. I might be making some appearances. Yeah. <laughs> Little they ain't going to take you to the train station, are they? <laughs> you staying hey. in the bunkhouse. You yeah, got to put I know, out. I know. <laughs> I guess if I don't do a good job, they're just going to be like, you know what, take her to the take, take, take her on down there. Take her to the train station, drop her off. Yeah. So I'm pumped about it. We, uh, we've we already filmed a couple episodes. and Did you get to meet Mr. Costner? I hadn't yet. Yeah. I hadn't had a scene with him. That'd but, be pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, I've met a lot of folks. I hadn't got to meet that man, but he's uh, he's. he's, he's Pretty something. I know. Else. So I'm excited. Like I said, I've I've never acted a day in my life, but um. I love me some Beth now. <laughs> you know what? She like she seems terrifying on the show. She seems like she will whoop your ass. But she is one of the nicest people. You know what I've shocked ever met me? In my life. I uh, because uh, I I, I kind of looked her up because I know she's she's British and she did yep. a lot of theater and stage and all that stuff. And and when she's not in her character, mm -hmm. you can she she developed that. Because oh, yeah. she, her facial expressions, when she speaks in her native language and her tongue and her dialect, she it's, doesn't even look the same. It's different. It's just like, whoa, that's drastic. I mean, she holds her jaw different when I she know. enunciates words. She she, her her face it. looks different. She does not even look like the same person. It's it's shocking. I know. It, it kind of threw me for a loop. Like, I was getting my hair and makeup done the other day, and uh, and she came in. She was like, I made you some bath salts. Like, here's you, like, enjoy yourself and, like, do da do I'm like... Bath? <laughs> I think I should be slamming that bath salt on top of my head. And <laughs> but, yeah, I'm learning a lot. Like I said, so many wonderful blessings and opportunities. And You, you think you're going to do more of that? I mean, you yeah. know what? I've My prayer has been for the Lord to just open doors for me that no man could open or close himself. And I have I've just made up my mind that if he gives me an opportunity, I'm just going to do it. Amen. And so... Um, like I'm stepping way outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> I've been acting a fool my whole life, but not, you know, really acting. <laughs> so we'll see. I'm I'm pumped about it, and it's it's going to be great. I wish you all the best. Ah. Much, much more success. Thank you. Anything I could ever do for you. Oh, I know. I'm going to get you another pair of bell bottoms till you wait. Absolutely. I'm going to get you your own. We'll have a Tracy Lawrence. just <laughs> A signature line. Yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, darling. Thank you, dude. See you. <laughs>